Please welcome to the stage from Jamf, Adam Mahmood, and from University of California, San Diego Health, Mark Silvestre. With the facility opening up, it gave us an opportunity with some technology to bring some of the latest and greatest to our patients. So we had done a pilot. We had piloted some androids. And some of you may recall this from a couple years ago. Um, one of the things that we found challenging was the wiping of these devices. Uh, we were able to pilot with the iOS. We reached out to Jamf and said, hey, if you can help us with an auto wipe, uh, for us, it's a fairly easy sell. I will give a shout out to Eric Boyd, our Apple SME, who's here today as well, for really pushing this. He had to convince me. But once we uh, engaged with you guys, you guys were willing partners. And when we opened, we were successful in auto wiping our tablets based on, in the health industry, it's called an ADT feeder, an HL7 interface. So it's based on a discharge and a transfer. We're actually able to implement an auto wipe in our device. When we rolled this out, we wanted to provide a couple different things to our patients. One was room controls, so we can control the lights, the blinds, the TV, uh, and the temperature. We also wanted for the patients to be able to throw things up to the TV. So we have an Apple TV behind every one of our TVs in this facility. As we redo some of our other units, we are adding an Apple TV behind the TVs for those uh, uh, rooms as well. So we can take uh, greater advantage of uh, what Apple TV has to offer, frankly. We have discovered that our staff, or excuse me, our patients are three times more likely to utilize the MyChart bedside app, which is access to their inpatient record on the tablet, um, when they're using our room controls. Patients that are using the room controls on the devices are three times more likely to also access MyChart bedside. So some interesting stuff that we're discovering with our uh, patient uh, community here. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Now, how about from an IT perspective? Uh, do you have any stats about how this has been operating at scale? Yeah. So one of our big concerns, as I mentioned, was the uh, wiping of devices. When we first did our pilot with an Android solution, we had to remote wipe the device. And in some cases, we actually had to have someone come up and wipe the device. That's a resource hog for us. And it's on many levels. There's a staff that has to make a phone call. There's someone that has to actually log in and do a wipe of a device. There's some risk, inherent risk with that. Um, we are, thanks to Jamf, able to wipe, roughly we're averaging about 50 device wipes a day in our Jacobs Medical Center, 245 bed facility. So since we have gone live, we are somewhere north of 32,000 auto wipes we have completed. And I want you to think about that for a second. That's 32,000 times someone's not making a phone call. That's 32,000 times we are eliminating any sort of risk of the wrong device being wiped. It's 32,000 times that someone at a service desk doesn't have to log into a system and try to identify that tablet and wipe that tablet. That is huge for us. And we have discovered that this is saving us roughly, just in Jacobs Medical Center, roughly 1,400 hours of uh, FTE time. So what's ne next for bedside at UC San Diego? So this has been so successful for us. Our CEO uh, demanded that we roll out iPads throughout the rest of our hospital, uh, our campuses. So I am proud to announce that as of last week, we officially deployed 500 additional tablets to all of our rooms at the uh, medical center. So that's three separate campuses. We've had a couple of areas where there were some challenges, but for the most part, 500 new tablets, so we have a total of 750. So I want you to think about that for a second. We have now tripled the number of devices we have out there. So the 50 wipes a day we've been doing is now going up to 150 wipes a day. So just think about that for a while. That's an FTE. On the service desk, that's at least two FTEs that would have to respond to calls. So this makes it much easier, easier for us to make this sort of decision to move this forward. You know, and we've been thinking about other scenarios like this too, where perhaps uh, a nurse or a technician might need quick, easy access to an experience on a device, but maybe just for the duration of their shift. And of course, we have some of the same needs. How do we ensure that their data is removed from that device and not left behind? Um, but I also think, as, as we've talked about, there are many scenarios where an automated solution like Healthcare Listener won't work. Mm -hmm. right? We need a simple solution to allow a user to take a stance in the process. And it was with that problem in mind that we developed a couple apps. So to tell you about these apps, uh, first, Jamf Setup, a simple way that a user can select the purpose of their device. This is all done over the air without any IT involvement. So to take a look at uh, the example, here we have an iPhone 10 enrolled into Jamf and staged with Jamf set up in the dock. The user can simply open the app, and they're met with a pre-approved list from IT, 
which has their roles or functions. And they simply make this selection, and that's it. The app will communicate back to Jamf Pro and reconfigure that device over the air. So here you see the necessary applications, the wallpapers, even restrictions available for that user. But again, what about the end of shift? How do we prep that device for the next user? Enter Jamf Reset, another application that is by far the simplest way to erase an iOS device. And again, all done without IT involvement. So that same iPhone 10 at the end of shift can simply be, again, we open up Jamf Reset, select the reset function, and upon confirmation, that device is wiped all over the air. Do you mind walking us through the pilot use cases for Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset at your facilities? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, the way in the healthcare, the way a discharge transfer works is through an, a, an interface, an HL7 interface, which you guys with healthcare listener were able to take advantage of. Uh, in an outpatient setting, there's not a discharge or a transfer. So right away, we don't have a trigger point. And so in, say, an apheresis area or in any outpatient clinic, for that matter, we might want to offer them a tablet. In our case, we do. And Reset will allow us to hand them a tablet, and when that patient is done with treatment or whatever they're in the, the facility for, we can then take that tablet, do a reset, and that tablet is wiped and ready for the next patient. Any ideas of where setup and reset could be used for that deployment? Yeah, it's, it is interesting, because we've talked about this and in, in, in thinking about this. Uh, when you're looking at a nurse uh, on a certain floor, for instance, a NICU, again, um, there may be uh, certain apps that they need to have access to that if they're on another floor in our BMT or, or our PACU, they don't need the same access. Uh, what's nice is we could deploy a bank of phones that they can grab. These are just phones for their shift. They could grab, identify their role, their floor that they're on, and use that device. Uh, the next staff member, the next nurse comes in. If they're not in, uh, a NICU nurse, they could identify what their role is, and the phone will be set up for them. It also will help us in remediation from a technical standpoint. When field services needs to take a look at some things, it's easier for them to identify which role the, the nurse was using. Um, our EVS, the people who come in and actually clean up the room, they need phones as well. They could grab the same phone. They're not going to have nearly the same apps that our staff would have. They can identify that role and then use that device as if it was their own personal device. So it's, uh, we're excited. We're excited about the opportunity. Again, I think this is perfect timing because we are just around the corner from deploying these iPhones. So it's great.